Hello. There's a show called My Drunk Kitchen a while ago on YouTube. It was pretty good. The person who did it was always like, hello. It's a fun one. I like it. Uh, hello. How are y'all? Uh, all right. Everything looks like it's okay. That's cool. The camera's back. Let's see if the camera keeps moving this time. It doesn't lock up. Uh, I really hope it doesn't. I really don't know what happened last time. So hopefully we don't have that happen again because that was kind of a bummer. Uh, so did the Google Foo Bar thing. Uh, turned it in. And we're halfway through level two now. Uh, I've already copied this down. This little note. Remember how's it the bunny trainers and explicitly fond of bananas. Still don't know how to. Wrap. Tool appearance. Edit. Somewhere there's a way to like soft wrap the text. I could Google it, but I want to see if I can find it because maybe I'll find something else interesting in the meantime. Code generate folding. No. Reformat, file, move up, line down. Wait. Unwrap, remove, insert live template. Uh, whatever. I'll keep looking for it. Yes, I could Google it. I'm not going to Google it right now. Uh, but what we are going to Google, or what we're going to look at, is uh, the next Google FUBAR challenge thing. So um, we start that off with request, requesting challenge. Okay. Requesting challenge. I should have copied all these. From level 2.2. Whatever. This gossip, gossip in the hench, latest gossip in the henchman break room is that Lamb Chop stands for Lambda's Antimatter Biofuel Collision Hadron Oxidation Potentiator. Okay. You're pretty sure it runs on diesel, not biofuel, but you can at least give the commander credit for trying. Okay, right. So new challenge, in route salute, out of your home folder. Home folder, home folder, wow. Uh, let's see what in route salute has for us. Copy it all down to start with, so we've got it. This is going to be two two directory project o two o two whatever. It's not the greatest naming convention, but that's fine. New file readme. Let's make it marked down because why not? Maybe you do it in here. Paste, copy, folding, refactor, generate. PyCharm, fold text. Wrap text is really what we want. I feel like I've looked this up before. Right click on the left gutter. Soft wrap. Got it. Uh, loves efficiency, hates anything that wastes time. The commander is a busy lamb. Uh huh. After all, Henchmen who identify sources of inefficiency and come up with ways to remove them are generously rewarded. You spotted one such source and you think solving will help build repetition. Okay. Every time the commander employees pass each other in the hall, each of them must stop and salute each other one at a time before resuming their path. A salute is five seconds long, so each exchange takes a full 10 seconds. You think that by removing the salute requirement, you could save several collective hours on the deploy part. But first, you need to show the commander how bad the problem really is. Write a program that counts how many salutes are exchanged during a typical walk along a hallway. The hall is represented by the string blah. Each hallway string will contain three different types of characters 
an arrow that way an arrow that way and a dash is an empty space every employee walks at the same speed either to the right or the left according to their direction whenever two employees cross each of them salutes the other they continue walking until they reach the end, finally leaving the hallway. In the above example, they salute 10 times. So there's one. There's two. That one's going to cross three and four. Okay, uh, I'll have to look at this. Write a function, solution. which takes a string represented representing employees walking along the hallway and returns a number of times employees will salute. S will contain at least one and at most 100 characters. Each one of that, 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 that. So two outputs for so you got to figure out this is funny the uh, and the other one they put python up for or they put java first and then python second and now they switched it cool ignore extension okay cool so let's try it solution to pi Uh, we're going to get the hallway. We're going to figure out where our arrow keys are. Pass. If name is main. Actually, you know what we should do is do this. We'll do it the right way. Test solution.py. Import unit test. Uh, and then import solution class test solution, which is going to be a unit test test case. You gotta pass it for a second. If name equals main, then we're gonna run unit test dot main. Let's run that. No tests, but nothing exploded. So we're in good shape. Test run one and we're ready for this one is expected two results is going to be two we're getting a number Does that work? Oh, look at all that. Result target. I'll probably fix that in a second. So run this, should go to passing test, cool. And then, so let's just do this. Result equals solution solution and we're going to put in this one and so we know this is going to break because it's not expecting a parameter all right it's just not returning anything all right we can close the notes we can close the readme 
Return two. Oop. Okay, cool. So there's our backstop. Now we gotta figure out the logic. Uh, I should have kept that open. So. Let's configure software up. Software up those files. Yes, please. Okay, cool. Whatever. It's fine. Okay, so... Write a function that, which represents the employees walking along the hallway and returns a number of times each employee will salute. Each hallway string will contain three different things. Each employee walks at the same speed, either the right or the left, according to their direction. Whenever two employees cross, each of them salutes the other. Then they continue walking until they reach the end, finally leaving the hallway. In the above example, they salute 10 times. One, two, three going that way, four going that way. <clears throat> so I feel like this is, it looks straightforward somehow. You just have to figure out how many, how many of the other arrows are on the opposite side of the starter. Oh, but you got to watch out for, you can't just pick one side. You got to actually look at both of them because no. Yeah. You only have to look at one side you only have to look at one direction i think because in order for a salute to happen it has to cross a person on the other side so even if there's another arrow on this side pointing outward outward whichever way is outward on the stream that wouldn't matter because they wouldn't make it they wouldn't cross anything so You would just look and see. Hey, yeah, how many matches? So let's try this. So this is salute 10 times. So if we start at this one, it's going to go one two, and you go to this one, three, four, and we go to this one, five. And then you multiply pumps two because they both do the thing. Right, so this one goes one, this one goes two, and multiply times two. So that seems too straightforward. All right, so how do we want to do this in Python? Um, Hmm. So you could get what would be a good way to kind of represent those? Because one way to do it would just be
well you could pull them you could pull them in as an index uh if name main I guess you can put stuff in parens with Python 2. Yes, because this is a Python 2 interpreter. Yes, it is. So this is our hallway. Ah, print just does nothing. Uh, okay, so what I was going to do is just split this into a list. Let's look at the Python string. Digits, octaves, punctuation, printable, white space, formatter, parse. Loop over the format string, return iterable tuples. Get field, get value. Format. Not worried about formatting right now. We want to break it down, not make it up. So like you could you could split it to a list. These are all formatting template strings. Helper function cap words. So where'd that parse go? Loop over the format string and return an iterable of tuples. This is used by V format. Okay, well, that's not gonna help us. I'm surprised there's not a lot more happening in this page. I feel like there's another. Library string. I guess that's it. I would have thought there would have been more lib string. Whoops. String constants, custom formatting, template helper functions. I'm really surprised there's not more here. Text sequence type string. String methods. There we go. No, it's on the same page, isn't it? Built-in types, this is what I'm looking for, okay. Index of the first occurrence of X in S at or after X I before index J. <clears throat> Count, total number of occurrences, max, min, length, slice. So you could use the index. Oh, let me just get one working. And so I'll, I'll get a kind of a straightforward one working and then we'll see if we can play with it more. So uh,
spaces is going to be hallway dot split. Nope. Text that split split X. Why didn't that split stuff for us? Gotta get nothing. Empty separator. Yes, I want an empty separator. Uh, I just want to split it. Split string. Hey, speed. Yep. Made it. Also, we finished the other one. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but... Uh, did I see your solution? Oh, no. Sorry. I didn't look. I went and ate, and now I'm back. Sorry. I'll look. My bad. Uh, here's what I did. Uh, look. Uh, there's mine. Uh, you remember something? Cool. Right, hang on a second. Let me throw this over here. Stop talking, please. Thank you. Uh, can I pop that out? No. Cool to show all this, right? Nothing crazy here. Uh, so the formula is solvable. Blah, 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 blah. I think I probably remembered some famous math person. This will take the top number. I'll get two, then high plus low or 101. Do some multiplication. So sum one through 100 is the same as 100 plus one times 100 divided by two because all the numbers are paired. One pairs to 100 for 101, two pairs to 99 for 101. Oh, okay. So it's really just 50 times 101. Okay. You see, it's just a shift of X, Y, Y1. So the formula above is solvable. X plus Y times X, Y minus one divided by two. Oh, okay. I, so yeah, I'm seeing it. Or I, I think I'm following. That's cool. That's cool. I like it. No loops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's flip. Yeah. And so this is I like I probably should have looked it up too. Um and run into that. <laughs> or at least see I mean I guess that's part of the problem or part of the trick, true. Is like can you find these things and go look them up? Or figure out how to get to them. Um Oh, no, no, so, And I'm not saying you looked up. Sorry, that wasn't what I meant. I didn't know it, so I could have gone and looked it up. Um, but this is... That's really slick. So, right. So, you... T okay. Yeah, subtract one and then divide by two. Minus y minus one. Minus y minus one. That's pretty slick. I like it. I like it a lot. Works it for odd numbers so you don't print floats. Yeah, printing floats would be bad, right? Because coordinates, right? <laughs> it needs to be a specific place. That's very slick. Good on you. I I didn't know that one at all. 
Um, I like, I, I feel like I totally missed out on like those type of math things. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. Uh, I feel like I totally missed out like on those math things. Like there's, there's those things exist and people have learned them and talked about them and do whatever. I just, they're not in my background at all. Uh, which is, it's fine. You know, whatever. I'm not angry about it, but it's just like, I feel like it would have been neat to have known that straight up front. Like you got it. That's awesome. I was never going to get to that unless I Googled for it. Um, I, my loop way was the only way that I could find it, um, without Googling. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's very cool. Good on you for picking that up. Oh, number file videos. Nice. That's actually that is so I should watch number file videos. Like I've watched a couple of them, uh, and, and like them, but haven't, I just don't, I kind of forget about videos sometimes. And like YouTube actually does a surprisingly bad job when I'm browsing of putting, like it always puts the same stuff that I've already seen in there. It's like, show me number files, show me Veritasium, show me whatever. Um, uh, the trick to one to hundred summing was one of the videos. Nice. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how many of the Google problems are solved in number file videos. Uh, and like, and so like, there's almost certainly a math one for this one too. Wait, where'd it go? Um, oh, I just closed the thing. Oops. View project. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, this is what I was trying to close. You really, I don't feel like you should be able to close that. It should always close these. Um, like there's almost certainly a math problem for these but I'm just going to power through it again. It's Cause like, so all I need to do, like I, I've got a pretty good idea of how to do it in terms of you just take the number of left carrots and you find the number of right carrots that are to the right of it or whatever, great, you know, whichever ones you find, you find the ones going this way, find how many going this way or that way of it, add all this together and multiply by two. I'm pretty sure it's the algorithm. The trick is just how you want to actually do it. And so like, you could, and so I'm going to, I'm going to do one just to run it and get it going. And then from there, mess around with it and see if I can find like a, you know, a funner way to do it basically. Um, oh, you didn't see the problem description. Uh, we can show you that right now. Uh, so commander hates inefficient stuff. Here's the meat of it. Uh, when employees pass each other in the hall, each of them must stop and salute. Okay. Um, one at a time before resuming their path. A salute is five seconds long, blah, blah, blah. takes forever. You think that by removing the salute, blah, blah, blah. So here's what we do. We want to prove how long it's taking to do this. So we need to no know the number of times um, that salutes are exchanged during a typical walk along a hallway. So hallways get sent to us in this format. So that's this is a character walking one way. That's a character walking another way or employee, whatever. And then dashes are just the hallway. Uh, and then they they continue walking, or they walk at each other, and then they when they cross, they salute, and then they continue walking. And I feel like there's a gotcha in here somewhere that I'm not seeing yet, um, but I haven't found it yet. And then, so you write a solution that takes a string representation of employees walking along the hallway and returns the number of times they salute. So, and I think, like, I think I've got the algorithm. Uh, cause like these two don't count. These two both have one, whoops, undo. These two both have one person walking the opposite direction that way from them. So that gives us two and then you just multiply by two and you get four. Um, so that's, that's it. So, and now it's just a matter of like figuring out how I want to do the solution. Um, and what I was going to do is, well, I'm, I'm trying to play around with a couple different ways to do it, but the, the easiest way would be, well, so you could grab the index of each one. And then from each one, you could just make that, you could just parse the rest of the string which I think is what I'm going to do anyways. So, but the first thing I got to do is figure out how to split. Why doesn't it split? 
a string into just a list. Default separator is inner white space. Oh, so how do I split on non white space? Uh, Python split string to list. Yeah, I, but I don't want. Oh, sep equals none. There you go. Using set, wait, function which returns a list of words in the string. Oh, no. So I just want, I don't want to have a separator. Uh, You just iterate the string. Doesn't even split. Splits are just list something. Just wrap in list. Oh, okay. So we do like, uh, actually here, let's do this. Spaces equals list that. There we go. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So then what you do is we do raw count equals zero, split it, and then I'm just gonna do, so this is, this is where it's gonna be inefficient to start with, but I just wanna see if we can solve it to start with. Um, for, uh, token in spaces if token nah let's see there's gotta be whatever to do that. this would work well let's see if this works so if token equals that oh but then you need to start it so we need to we need to pull off indexes. Um, so not quite. So the the gotcha in here is these. So like this character will pass this character one time. These two won't pass anything but these two will pass this one. Um, so we've got to get, we need to know how many times each one of them passes the other one. And so what, like what I was thinking you could do is, I, it feels like you could pull the index of any given one and then start from there to get the rest of them and run that way. Um, string, left trim, that, right trim, that. Yeah, that would help kill him. I like that. Uh, but like that's, that's so that's that's an optimization, but it, we still have to figure out like it, it's the internal logic though that we got to solve for. So what we could I, okay, hang on a second. Here's here's where we go. We do we do so we do this. Spaces equals list of hallway, and then for index and token in enumerate, enumerate spaces. Let me just print this and make sure this is working. Print token. Yeah, so there's our tokens. And then what we want to do is if token equals 
that. Now we want to loop through it again for token two in range. No, so that's going to be, we need to do an index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for token index in range of index, whoops, to length of spaces. If spaces token index is going the other direction, then spaces, no, raw count equals raw count plus two. We can just go ahead and do that there. And then print raw count. Or actually here, it's just return raw count. So if we run that, there's two. Okay, cool. And then here is our other solution. Let's do the other test. So this should equal four, if we got this right. There's four, and then last one. Where's example up here? This one should equal 10. And there's 10. Okay, there we go. Um, you just count the slice and do it in this one line. Just use a slice. Spaces index. Camera froze. Oh, God damn it. I mean, pardon me. That one's still working? Yeah, all right. This is awful. But it's working, so... We'll use it. Slice. Reverse engineers. Yeah, I'm sure. 100%. Um, I'm holding the wrong mouse, too, but you can't see that because the camera's frozen. That's a very flattering image of me just stuck there. Why don't we turn that off? Just because it's frozen. Uh, boop. Ah. <sighs> That's so annoying. I don't know what's going on with that, obviously. Otherwise, I would fix it. Get that set up so it's actually kind of straight. Uh, you code a lot of Python? Nice. Uh, yeah, I do not code a lot of Python. So I, I'm going to keep looking up there. So when I do that, you'll... Uh, sorry. Um, spaces index colon... I'm cool with I'm cool with this. I mean, I've got I, I'm cool with slice. Uh, index token enumerate spaces. The second loop is written very JavaScripty. Sure, it's probably Perly actually is going all the way back, um, which is where I first started doing stuff. So for index and token enumerate if the tokens there is this where you would do spaces index I don't understand where that would go in Or is it here? Raw count. 
Here, hang on a second. Let me do this. Before I mess with this one too much. Not that I, like, I'm pretty sure I could get back that without too much problem, but, um, just replace line nine. Okay, row account. And then you would drop the other two lines below it, right? Yeah, raw count. Spaces, index, count. Oh, neat. I got gotcha. you. Uh, times two. Uh, we need to do that twice. So raw count. This times two. Or we could multiply times two later or whatever. Uh, does that matter? Oh, that's doing it all in one shot. I gotcha. So that should give us a 10 again. Nice. That's pretty cool. So, right. So you could, for index and token, so you could also do this with, and you'd have to do a try catch on it, but, um, you could do it like with an index this way for those and then loop over that, I guess. I don't know how that would work. I don't know. Is there, a, is there another way to not... See, this is where I don't know about um, all the stuff you can do in Python. Uh, you can do it with hallway. Is there a way you can not? Oh, so um, what I was trying to what I was trying to figure out is if you could do it without doing a for loop, like. And I don't know how you would do that unless there's a way to like hoist out the indexes of things. That was that was not good. That was not good language. Um, Python list. So like, let's try Python list instead of Peyton list. Also, that game is still going over here. It's super distracting me out of the corner of my eye. Um, append, yeah, so I wanna see, is there... So you'd still loop over it with index. Count, I didn't know, okay, this is cool. I, I've seen this before, but I never thought about that idea there. That's cool. Sort, no, reverse, no, copy, no. Yeah, I just need to go through and look at all the methods that are available in everything because I don't know them. Um, tuples and sequences. But that's cool. That's really cool. That's it. And then you, yeah, so you could do it. So strings have the indexes. So if you just enumerate over hallway... Does that work? Yes, it does. Because you can just fire straight. And that's, I think that's what you're saying a second ago. Um, I like that space there, even though I don't think you're supposed to do that in Python. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so remove lists. I needed stuff. 
Yes, 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 yes. Right. That's really cool. Uh, index token, enumerate, hallway. Yeah, I just, I wonder if there's another, so is there, you couldn't grab, and like, this is cool, I'm going with this. This, this is cool, I'm going with this. Um, but I'm wondering if there's, I don't know what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if there's like another kind of approach to that. Not at all that I'm worried about it. It's just that it's, I'm playing with it at the moment. So that's cool. Uh, but let's just put in our actual test cases. I'm fairly confident in these. This should be four. Hello, four. This should be two. Hello, two. Uh, cool. So, got it. Yeah, it's a list, right? Yeah, it's gotta it it's gotta hit the stuff, right? It can't not look at the things. So is this and you're looking at each one, you're counting. So theoretically, so if this counts the entire thing, so if you did the range thing, you would actually start, you'd be a little bit more. But wouldn't you start from the index? So like, if the first one that we saw was at position 10, you're down here. Um, basically, you started the index line, same, same. Oh, right, 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 right. Because it says index right here. I'm with you. I'm with you. Still getting in my head. Cool, all right. Uh, here, let's send that one up. Uh, the only thing that's a bummer. Here, let's do this. Oh, I can't. I can't send that up. So I've been basically putting on here that I, um, that I stream these things if Google wants to watch me actually do them. Um, so I'll just link to my channel and say they can find it from there. Uh, actually, no, yeah, it's fine. What I could do is I could put a page on my site that links to all of them, but I'm not ready to do that yet. So whatever. They don't have them on here. It's just edit. Also, control C doesn't work. Oh, it did. Uh, edit solution pi. I don't need to hit I. This is not them. Um, working on this and we'll be posting it here if you want to play along at home. All right, so where is our actual code? This is our code. Cool. Save. Oh, whoops. Guess I should actually put in the link. Where's the thing? There's the thing. Whoop. Um, erratic sort would be faster if it could come up with a way, just generate it once and do some bit of manipulation, something fancy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I like 
I, I that's one of the things that's interesting to me about these things is like I don't know like the deep down parts of these, so it's fun to like play around with them and see what I can come up with. Uh, but I expect that like folks who know much more about it have you know design patterns and all the other stuff to to get it going. Uh, I think we did all this. Okay, cool. Close. Verify solution. All passed. Cool. Submit. Do it. Uh, I don't know what a radix sort is either. Radix sort. Erratic Sort is a slow Wikipedia page because my internet. Uh, <laughs> probably think of it at dinner. Get the brain going in the background. Uh oh, I hope I'm still streaming. Looks like maybe. There we go. Non comparative sorting algorithm avoids comparison by creating and distributing elements in buckets according to their erratics. For this reason, Radix sort has been called a bucket sort. Okay. And digital sort. Radix sort can be implemented to start the most significant digit or least significant. Hmm. LSD. Nice. Put stuff in buckets. Gotcha. I uh, will look at this for real at some point. I'm not going to sit here doing it now because that might be really boring and would probably be really boring. Uh, let's see what the next this thing is. From level three, uh, one. Whoop. Nope, that's not it. Because it doesn't copy without doing this. Copy. But it eats memory. Ah. Oh. Interesting. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, I need to know. Right? I just don't know any of that stuff. Uh but I'm starting to kind of look into it a little bit and see how that goes. Uh, find the access codes. All right, let's grab this one. Let's see what we got. Copy. Project 03, 01. We're assuming there will be other ones. New. Read me MD. Oh, I should have looked at the constraints earlier. I think the constraints are the same, though. Yeah, constraints look to be the same every time. So, I, But I should verify that and make sure that that's really a thing. Um, uh, no, I'm not really a pro developer. Um, I just, I kind of, I've done some coding, but most of my job is like meetings and management type stuff. Um, I kind of help out when we need to figure out new stuff, but I don't really like code code. Kind of hard to like, I'm, I'm jack of all trades kind of thing where I go in and help solve things is the best way to talk about it. So I don't have like a big batch of knowledge of coding stuff, but it's like, hey, there's a thing that we need to have happen. Go figure out how to how, how to make it happen. Ta-da. Um, oh, right on. 
network engineering stuff network engineering stuff right on very cool yeah and it's i mean i think i think there's probably a bunch of jobs out there that aren't like the hardcore like code code stuff and then there's a bunch that are the hardcore just constant coding stuff i'm very much not constantly doing it um i do way more stuff on stream than i do whatever and that's actually one of the th one of the reasons i'm doing the on stream stuff is to actually practice more and learn more and get more into it um not really for the gig but just because i like it and enjoy it so um oh, yeah, you code if, if you know networking nice <laughs> right on um the uh i know no networking <laughs> um the we ran into an issue with cider blocks the other day and i said i've heard of those um i understand a little bit when you explained to me why the overlap was a problem and we couldn't actually put two things on the same the networks would collide but that was about as far as i went um the 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 depth of that i've seen just a little bit and that's a lot um 32 bit binary numbers yeah nothing special yeah and like there was an overlap with them because they made one of the ranges too big um and when we first set something up and then you couldn't it, what should have been a small network was a giant network and then we couldn't incorporate it into the other one i think because they would have collided um so yeah the network mass stuff yeah um contiguous bits from the right side okay right yeah because it was the um this is wrong but we made a 16 when we should have made a six or a 32 or vice versa or like a eight when it should have been a 16 i don't remember um I, those not like those numbers are almost certainly wrong so don't <laughs> and like whatever um if it would do 255 16 yeah, and 32 is all threes, or all three. All four, oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, oh, so 32 gets you to a specific IP address, right? Because when you put in, yeah, because like, whatever, messing around with, um, AWS, not, whatever they call their firewall, security groups. I know when you put in the IP addresses, like if you're if you're going to a specific IP, you do slash 32, which is the the IP address versus all the rest of the stuff. That's that's the limit of my network knowledge right there. Um, so, <laughs> hooray. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Um, uh okay i'm not gonna car it i'm gonna cat it let's try that all right let's see what we got uh in order to destroy commander lambda's lamb chop doomsday device you need to access it only door leading is a secure door with a unique thing that pat cha changes daily Get to report every day, but only commander knows how to figure out which of several lists containing the access codes. You need to find a way to determine which list contains the access codes once you're ready to go in. Fortunately, now your commander's lambda personal assistant. Lambda's confide to you that all the access codes are lucky triples. In order to e easier to find, the, find them in the list. A lucky triple is a tuple, X, Y, Z, where X divides Y and Y divides Z, such as one, two, four. With that information, you can figure out which list contains. See, these are funny because it's like these are like partially programming problems, but it's also like the math thing, right? Um, hey, Enrique. Hello. Welcome. Um, so your network is probably 192, 168, 00. Enrique, wait. I may be saying that wrong. Hello, 28. If I said that wrong, apologies. Um, yeah, I, and again, you've lost my the knowledge of my of the all the network stuff. Um, it's the 24 cider block. Sure, 
Sounds great. Um, also, sorry, my my that I have a camera over there that's dead, so I'm down here now. Um, so I'm gonna keep looking up there instead of down there. Um, and yeah, I was I was. It's fun to be excited. Um, invited. Uh, fortunately, not your commander's professional assistant. Lambda confided access codes. Blah blah blah. Okay, we did that. With this, info, with this info, you can figure out which list contains the number of access codes. The number of access codes that matches the number of locks on the door when you're ready to go in. For example, if there are five pass codes, you need to find a list with five lucky triple access codes. Right. Write a function. Solution L takes a list of positive integers L and counts the number of lucky triples. L I L J L K where the list indexes meet the requirements. I is less than J is less than K the length of L is between two and 2000 inclusive. The elements of L are between one and a bunch of nines. The solution fits within a signed 32 bit integer. Some of the lists are purposely generated without an excess key to throw off spies. So if no triples are found, return zero. Oh yeah. No, no, we're not working. I, I don't mind it. Like, I like learning about it. It's just, I don't know, like, we would need to have lessons because uh, I can't, I just don't know enough about it. I'm, I'm interested in all that stuff. Just don't know it yet. Okay, write a solution L that takes a list of positive integers. So that's the list and counts the number of lucky triples. And this is where I don't get the L I L J L K because we did X, Y, Z up here, but I'm guessing that's what this is. Where the list indexes meet the requirements. I is less than J then equals K. A lucky triple is a tuple where X divides Y and Y divides Z such as one, two, such as one, two, four where X divides Y and Y divides Z, as in it can go directly into and doesn't have a remainder. I'm not 100% sure I understand this in general. Um, re needs re no remainder, that's where I was headed. With that information, so yeah, so it's not that X because where it says X divides Y and Y, such as one, two, four. One goes into two, two goes into four. Okay. Okay, it takes a list of positive integers and counts the number of lucky triples. where the list indexes meet the requirement I, J, K. Okay. Length of L is between two and 2000. The solution fits within a 30 bit signed. Okay, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six has the triples one, two, four, one, two, six, one, three, six, making the solution total. Oh. Okay. Holy crap. Uh, interesting. So this is a computer science problem. Um, uh, recursion and backtracing. Um, Right, so you have to, and this is where there's 100% a computer science way to do this, that if you know, you just know, I don't. So I'm gonna bang my head through it and see what happens uh, and then go from there. Cause that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah, so I'm also FYI, I'm not really expecting to get calls from Google about this. This is just a fun thing to play around with. Um, Okay, so the 
the first, it sounds like the first thing, write a function solution that takes the list of positive integers L and counts the number of lucky triples of L, I, J, K. See, okay, so they have to be in order. So that's fine. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Um, Also, are we supposed to sort the lists? Yeah, I. it doesn't say to. I'm going to assume that that's, that you want to do that. Like, I wouldn't expect it to hurt things dramatically if we sorted it. Um, so, if you just do, because it's, it's just divided by well let's just start throwing some code at it and see what happens uh raw numbers But actually what I want to do on this one, we're going to throw a test at this one. Import unit test, import solution, class test solution. I really should make a, uh, template for this pass if name main unit test main this should run but not have anything in there whoop oh, what that was oh, I hit it twice no test, cool. So, def test one. So, expected equal, and so what we wanna do is, one, whoops, one. Result equals solution, solution, boop. Whoa, ah, see? I really wish control C would work on that because it messes with me whenever it doesn't. Um, self, start equals, expected result. So that's gonna crash. Um, Grab it into zero, like write something that's evenly divisible. Yeah. Um, once you have it hit, get that new index. Yep, exactly where I'm headed. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with unit test. Um so at some point I'll mess around with my test. Uh I just haven't yet. The I I'm not like I am not religious about any of my code stuff. Um, the, uh, let me close this. Is this, I have too many things open right now. Uh, solution, raw list. One, two, no, return. I'm going to return two for a second. Test failed because one, two is not equal to one. There we go. So this is going to be one. That'll just give me something to play with. Um, how are you with recursion? I've done it. Um, 
let me take a swing at this for a second and then we'll figure out the recursion thing um because it's but i might i might walk into recursion actually uh because what but let me start it with just trying to figure out how to get my teeth into this to start with oops oh i killed the readme let's bring that back Zip. Copy. Pasty. Save. Okay. So if we've got the list coming in, so you got to start so we need to you got to call like you got to look at the first thing right so you pop basically you can pop the first thing off the list right and then where x divides y and y divides z such that one's two four but it doesn't but so they don't have to be in order And what I mean by that is this jumps from one to three. So it's not like they have to actually be next to each other. So triple four loop, never pop left, super slow. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. G. Um, yeah, so you could like, you could just grab one, but what I'm thinking is, so, you know, so, you know, the index every time, right? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the straightforward way is like, is, is three, four, is three, four loops, right? So for num a in raw list, uh, print num a, I just want to, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's going to give us, oh, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to do this. Uh, I can't type anymore. Print solution of, I'm just going to do 111 again. Except two is going to be in there for some reason. Uh, where are my arrow keys? They're there. So you'd only, but you'd only want, so there's a gotcha here, which is. Oh, print it in return. Yeah. yeah. Um, wait. Yes. Right, so I did all these and then I printed one more. I gotcha. Um, that's fine. But there's, the gotcha right is that the last, there needs to be at least two left in order to, to run this. So. For num b in. So you would do raw lists. Oh, you'd want to do an enumerate to grab the indexes, right? Because I need to know what, what index I'm at to look at the next one. Index A, num A, in numerate. Why not that working? Raw list. Because then you would do for. Index B, I feel so. 
Numby in an Emirate raw list. And then how do you do a, Is this where you do the slice where you start at an index? Cool. And would you do index A or index? You'd have to do index A. Or would you do index A plus one? Colon, I gotcha, yeah. And then this goes to C. And this goes to B. And then just in here, and here's where you do the math and just say if, if, and you could actually pop one of the ifs up, right? Um, see, I do need to do that though. So uh, whatever, three, four, five. I just want to see three, four, five show up. Uh, no. Oh, I'm printing the indexes, not the numbers. Oops. That would be why. That confused me. Now I should see, yeah, a whole bunch of threes. I'm confused as to why. I would expect it to see the first one should have printed out. Uh, whatever. Um, index A plus one. Oh, here. That's what, okay. I was wondering about that. I think this is what you mean. This. There we go. Three, four, three, four. Still confused by that. Seems like the first time through the loop, I should hit three, four, five. And it's just doing three, four, four, three, four, five. Oh, 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 wait, 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 hang on. No, nope, I'm confused. So the raw list, so this should be A, this should be B, which should be four, and then why am I getting a four there? Oh, you can't break out all loops. Of course it's true. Um, one, 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 one. Very positive, these ones. We're going over raw list. We're doing raw list from one, which should have a four in it, and it does. B plus one. Something's weird here, because this should be three, four, five, I think. In Python 2, is that how you do? Nope. Commas? One, three, one, three. I know that's not what I'm looking for. It's printing a tuple or whatever, but like, that's fine. So what's this two? I just need the output. I don't care that I'm not doing it right right now. Why is three? Why is num C also set to four?
Debug time. Yeah. <laughs> I should definitely debug. Um. Yes. Is it? It feels like an off by one error. But I don't understand why this one's working and this one's not. Because this one jumps to four for B and then index B. Oh, it does. We're not, yeah, we're not giving it another list. Right, 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 right. Wait, but I thought the whole point, shouldn't this, wait a minute, what are the, what are the indexes? I won. Index A. Two. Three. B. C. They are all zeros. But, uh... Just use the comma start. It, wait, okay, so the indexes are, oh, indexes aren't getting assigned. I gotcha. But, so this is a raw list and it's enumerating over that. This plus one is kicking it up. This plus one is kicking it up. That's why it's four, four. Okay. Okay. So really you could just do this and we're going to run out of space here at some point, right? I mean, like this is going to freak out because those, those don't exist, but let me see if this at least gets, gets us three, four, five. Okay. So that gets that, um, enumerate iterator start. Okay. Oh, so I'm doing I'm doing this through a slice instead, but that that would be the same thing as a comma. Like that. Same thing. That iterated many more. Mm, didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this this worked. I'm going to go back to this. This is getting me what I'm expecting to see. I don't care about the indexes. I'm just getting three, four, five, and then let's clear this. Yeah, three, four, five, three, five, five. And so here's gonna be the trick is we need to bounce. Like when there's not enough numbers left, we need to bounce. Uh, but you have to shift. It won't work for a list of six. Or loop will not go inside. This is tough to explain or tough to understand. It won't work for a list of six. Discord time if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, hang on a second. Let me figure out where my Discord is. Uh, okay.
try that. And hang on, I'm not sure if this is all gonna work or not. That's the wrong keyboard. Oh, this is. Stand by. Hang on. Everything's dead. Uh, there we go. I, I got you. Can you hear me on Discord? Right on. Which which way can you hear me now? Uh, I can only hear you on stream. Oh, great. Uh, all right, hang on. I got to kill the music. This is ridiculous. Fine. I can also hear my own echo. Oh, God. Yeah, give me one second, and I think I can make the echo go away for you. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully that kills it. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. So... I got you. Understood, I think. Yeah. So we pull the index number. Like that. Oh, okay. Let me process this first. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So we bounce. Yeah, okay. So this is where we were trying to do earlier. Yep. There you go. Right. Three, four, six, three, five, six. That's super cool. Right. Three, four, five, three, four, six. Oh, that's really good. And, and so if, 
if we had started, like you could make this any arbitrary number inside the list, but you would still just say set at one or like I could set this to like seven, assuming we had a bunch of things, right? And this index would just start at, like this becomes an arbitrarily controlled number. Okay, right. Um, but it's not the start number inside the index or in, inside the list, right? That's super cool. I gotcha. Yeah, you just do that, right? I gotcha. That's super cool. Oh, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Mm, okay. That's actually one of the things I was wondering about. Right, 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 right. Right, so I could... Right. That's really cool. I really like that. That's really slick. And then so here, basically, you just do the the rest of the of the trick. Oh yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. I appreciate the help. We'll catch you next time and have a great, great dinner. Cool. See it. Cheers. All right. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sweet. That's really, really cool. Uh, also, I may start doing that a little bit on the Discord stuff and ha keep that handy. I don't know what's going on with the... Looks like I'm still live there. Uh, bring some music back in because I think I've made that go away for a little while. I should... Yeah, so I should... I need to figure out how to wire up so that I could talk to people on the Discord on the thing. I've seen some people do that. Um, Dario does that uh, and it's pretty slick. So uh, yeah, I'll do that too. Here we go. So three, four, five, six. Um, so I want to come up with some of my own test cases for this, but the first one to do one, 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 return one. Okay. So really what we want to do is one, two, four. This has one. I don't know why that passed. Results, are we hard coding one back? Yeah, we're still doing one back, okay. Uh, yeah, one, 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 and so here we go. Actually, let's do this as their test case. Mm, let's do, yeah, that was it, actually, three, okay. And we're gonna get three from that. 
So this is gonna bomb because we're hard coded for that. Now we're gonna put in three here. I just wanna have the test case back behind us so we can see what's happening. That's cool. Uh, oh, that's really cool. So then, what we'll need to do is, so if, oh, this is interesting. So the first thing you could do is you could loop through Oh, this is where I wish this is something that you can't do with the for loops in Python that I wish you could do, which is if if we run the second number and we do a division and the division isn't doesn't have a remain does have a remainder, so it's not straight divisible. We should be able to iterate to the next loop at that point. You can't do that in Python. You can't break out of like, you can't break out of the top for loop. I'm going to get this working and then we'll figure out how to pull the stuff out and, and pull it on the, the other for loops. Just to see, like, oh, that's a bummer. Um, Cause like in Perl, for example, or maybe Ruby, I can't remember, but you can actually name for loops. So you could bust out of a particular for loop and go from there. Uh, or maybe you can break, you know, can you break? That's a good question. If I break there, I just wanna see what happens. Three. Yeah, see nothing. It breaks before it gets to that. That's fine. Maybe you can do it. Let me just get the let me just get the first thing working and then we'll pull it down. Um so If not, num b mod num a if not num c mod num b print uh, I don't think they have f strings right or they have format I can't remember format Num A, num B, num C. Nothing happened. One, two, four. Run. One, two, four. Okay. And then so one. Three six should also work. One three five won't work, but nine will work. And one three six nine. One three six one three nine. Yeah, so that.
Well, and what we could do is bump this up. Well, first let's do the tests. Matches equals nada. Matches plus equal one. Return the matches. Run it. Two. That didn't work. Oh, one, three, six, nine. Yeah, 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 maybe it did. Hang on. Three. Cool. One, three. Yeah, that's it. And then what you could do to optimize it a little bit is we could pull this up here and only run that. So we check the first one first and if it doesn't work, we don't worry about trying to ch don't worry about looping through the second one. That's cool. And then test solution like this is going to be three. Let's take that printing out so we don't mess with ourselves. Cool. And then ones is just going to equal one. Run that. Should be one. Cool. And also, I just like seeing test fail first. So there's the failure. Two is not one. One is one. And then what was the other one that they had? One, three, four, five, six. I think that's actually one, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's what they gave us. That's cool. Uh, I like it. So let's see if we can come up with one more test. So so two to four to eight. To 12. How many should this be? So 248 is 1. 2412 is 2. 4812. So 3. I think this is 3. Nope. 2 is not equal to 3. Uh, 2, 4, 4 to 8. Oh, 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 okay, no, four to eight. This would have to be 16. Two, four, eight, two, four, 16. Now it's gonna be three. Nope, now it's four. Two, four, eight. 
Oh, four eight sixteen. Two four eight. Two eight sixteen. Four eight sixteen. Where's the fourth one coming in? Remember when I took that out? Let's add that back in. Whoops. Oh, 248, 2416, 2816, 4816. Got it. Okay. 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 That makes sense. That's really cool. I really like that. I really like that. I got to figure out why my camera keeps pausing, freaking out, stopping, whatever, because that's kind of a bummer. Uh, all right. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to call it there. We'll uh, we'll turn this in and, and see what happens from there uh, and do the next one next time. So thank you very much, Speed. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, see y'all next time. Cheers.